Texas Killing Field is a 25-acre stretch of land just a mile away from Interstate 45. Why was it called the Killing Field? There were 30 human remains discovered in that particular field, which might support the belief that it was cursed. But the reality is, Texas Killing Field is now under investigation and possible killers are being hunted down by the authorities. Is it possible to solve a decades-old cold case with a confession letter from prison? A question which deserves a fixed answer. Stay with me as we go a few decades back. Let's begin our journey. Texas Killing Field is located near Galveston, bordering the Calder Oil Field and League City. The location is relatively remote, even more so back in the 1970s. The isolated nature of the area makes it a perfect place for taking someone else's life, unseen and unheard. As a result of its ins and outs, the area makes an excellent location to get away with murder. Three counties have jurisdiction over the fields and small towns surrounding them. Due to this, investigations here were dispersed among 11 different departments, as proven for most of the history of the crimes. It is accessible from a nearby highway, which can bring people from far afield here, quickly and which provides a quick exit, making it another layer of difficulty to solving the crimes committed here. However, it does not mean that law enforcement has given up. As early as the 1970s, the remains of 30 people have been recovered from the Texas killing fields. Most of them were women. While some were identified quickly, others went unidentified for decades without a name to link them to a past and a family. In 2006, the killings appear to have stopped. According to the FBI, this is probably due to the area's increasing development and population since the 1990s. A road has been paved and a housing development has sprung up nearby, increasing the number of potential witnesses. The site has also increased in notoriety and today has the attention of law enforcement. People get interested in true crimes and the area has been a place of constant visits to the families of some of the victims. Colette Wilson, one of the first known victims found in the Texas killing fields, is a 13-year-old girl who was abducted from an intersection in Alvin, Texas. According to the investigation, Wilson had just returned from band camp and was waiting for her mother, Claire, to pick her up. The time between Colette's drop-off and her mom's arrival were mere minutes. It soon became apparent that she was missing, perhaps taken by a car that Colette's mother had seen on her way to pick up her daughter. An impromptu search party was formed by the Wilson family after police assumed Colette was a runaway. Colette's abduction was finally acknowledged by the police, but the search was botched throwing away potential evidence. While searching for Colette, other victims were discovered, including 14-year-old Brenda Jones and 19-year-old Gloria Ann Gonzalez. Not long after, Colette's skeletal remains were uncovered nearby. Given the frequency of the killings and the similarities of some of the crime scenes, it's thought that the Texas killing fields have been used by one or multiple serial killers. Police detectives and FBI agents believe that this is the graveyard of a vicious serial killer according to Texas Monthly reporter Hollinsworth. Some of the crimes are linked by haunting details, including the arrangements of victims' remains beneath trees in some fields. Several investigators have suggested that they formed a kind of walking trail used by a single killer to linger over the remains. Robert Abel, a retired NASA engineer, was suspected of being one such killer, but few seem to agree on that. The father of victim Laura Miller, Tim Miller, was so convinced that Abel was his daughter's killer that he stalked Abel and even reportedly held a gun to the engineer's head in an effort to get him to confess. Abel maintained his innocence until his death and no evidence directly connecting him with the killings was ever uncovered. Miller later apologized to Abel for the harassment. Laura Miller was a 16-year-old girl who had recently moved to League City, Texas. According to the FBI, she showed promise in the music class but had difficulty managing a seizure disorder and began to withdraw from both school and life. Laura's mother drove her to a payphone so she could call her boyfriend that September. Despite saying that she would walk back home after the call, Laura never returned home. She was initially believed to be a runaway by the police, possibly due to the stress caused by the recent move and her health problems. In spite of extensive searches, the guardians never found or heard from their daughter again. The remains of Laura were found more than two years after her disappearance in the same oil field on Calder Road, where another woman had been discovered. 
more remains of women, both known and unidentified, have been discovered in the same fields. Some believed that they were the victim of the same killer. Tim, Laura's father, now runs a nonprofit search team which works to locate missing people in the United States and beyond. Since its founding in 2000, the organization has helped find more than 400 living people. There's always going to be that empty plate at the dinner table, but her death wasn't in vain, were the words Tim used to say during interviews about his advocacy. Sharon Shaw and Rhonda Renee Johnson were among the four so-called surfer girls who disappeared in the summer of 1971. The two friends would often hitchhike back home, and that's exactly what they did on August 4, 1971, the last day they were seen alive. Later that year, Debbie Ackerman and Maria Johnson also disappeared in the same place. All four were killed, the remains later found in nearby bayous. A mechanic known as Michael Lloyd Self was arrested in 1972 for the murders of Shaw and Johnson. It may have been a relief for locals to see him convicted and sentenced to life in prison, but relief was just temporary since the killings continued while Self was locked away in prison. There were also some serious problems with Self's conviction. Chief of Police Don Morris reportedly threatened Self during the interrogation process. Self died in prison in 2000, leaving many wondering if the wrong man had been convicted after all. I did not kill Sharon Shaw and Renee Johnson. It was just all behind politics and wanting a conviction. The claim Self had been saying over and over while being imprisoned. Kevin Edison Smith is one of the few killers with a confirmed link to remains found in the Texas killing fields. He was convicted of capital murder for the death of Crystal Jean Baker, a 13-year-old girl who was abducted from a Texas City convenience store in 1996. In the investigation, Baker, who was a great niece of Norma Jean Baker known by her stage name Marilyn Monroe, had argued with her grandmother and stormed out of the house. She called her mother from a payphone at the convenience store and then was never heard from again. Finally, Baker's killer was identified when clothing recovered from the crime scene was tested for DNA evidence. It matched a sample taken from Smith at an earlier arrest. Smith admitted to abducting and killing Baker, then leaving her remains beneath a bridge. As the years advance, technology is helping to reveal the identities of remains found in the Texas killing fields. In 2019, two women previously known only as Jane Doe and Janet Doe were identified as Audrey Lee Cook and Donna Prudholm via DNA testing. For the sleeping cases that had seemingly ceased decades ago, it was a significant development. And yes, it also proved the power of DNA analysis. Though it's still unknown who took their lives, the news brought some closure to Cook and Prudholm's families. Cook was a 30-year-old mechanic who had moved to Houston for work. Prudholm was a mother of two who was last seen in the summer of 1991. One man has received plenty of attention for his possible link to multiple crimes in the Texas killing fields. He was Edward Harold Bell, serving a 70-year sentence for murder. From his prison cell, he claimed that he killed 11 girls he referred to as the 11 who went to heaven. He also provided names and details like hair color and the years he committed the crimes. Bell died in 2019, leaving behind little real evidence for authorities to confirm his story. DNA may have provided some insights, but it was impossible to recover it from some of the evidence which had been collected decades ago. Some have also speculated that Bell falsely confessed to gain attention and notoriety. It was hard for investigators to ignore the detailed confession letter Bell left behind. That letter includes details that line up well with the facts of some cases. Texas killing fields may be labeled as a cold case, but doesn't mean it's just sitting on a shelf. Not being worked, it's being worked actively by the FBI. Technology may be helping law enforcement to identify the victims found in the area, but the names of perpetrators are even more difficult to pin down. Authorities are actively looking for leads relating to the Texas killing fields murders. Anyone with information is encouraged to visit tips.fbi.gov or reach out to their local FBI office. What do you think of our video today? Let us know your thoughts.